perspective in india usually it changes from company to company or country to country it changes so what all the authorities will follow companies usually follow the same when it comes to us they will follow january to december pattern when it's come to china they will follow few of them will follow from july 1st to june 30 so it, their calendar year starts from july 1st and ends with june 30 in businesses so that's what we call as a fiscal year actually so where it starts and where it ends we call it as fiscal year and the calendar which holds all these years is called fiscal calendar so now i can create a fiscal calendar for you and how, i'll show you how to create a fiscal calendar for a legal entity or what could be the requirement of the clients in the business how we can how they ask about fiscal calendars or how they want to maintain fiscal calendars and what are the different options dynamics provides you to design calendars or to meet the different business scenarios that client might have in their business i'll explain you all of them okay so we also have a concept of ledger calendar in dynamics ledger calendar is not entirely about calendar and all it's about certain permissions and all we will discuss that ledger calendar it's a it's a topic a new topic out of uh, general topics so we will discuss this once after we complete the fiscal calendar topic fine getting back to the configuration part so we'll see so if does anybody have any confusion in this what is meant by fiscal calendar or why it is required in business no so why the chinese will keep that uh, july 1st to do june uh, it, 30 so uh, it's it's their uh, local authorities or if they would follow that that pattern they will follow that year so it's not it, it's not mandatory that uh, every chinese person will for each chinese business will follow the same pattern it differs in india normally we follow from april 1st to march 31st because our authorities will have or our companies act or our tax act will follow this calendar year only yeah. usually so in order to sync with all of them we follow the same year so to report your taxes or to file your taxes or to get your accounts audited so all for all these things you have the same year right so you'll follow this it changes from authority to authority in different countries again so okay there any clash between this fiscal calendar and normal calendar that normally we follow actually not not exactly clash but in terms of conflict of uh... no see if you have a indian legal entity and if you have a us legal entity both of them are separate and if you want to follow two different calendar structures for two legal entities then you have to design two different calendars okay and if you have all of them are Indian located companies only, suppose you have 10 legal entities and 10 of them are India based only and all of them have to follow same pat calendar pattern, then you can design a single calendar and assign it to all the companies or all the legal entities. You can use that single calendar. But mm -hmm. within an organization, if you have multiple legal entities from different countries, then you have to design separate calendars. Okay. And just to reflect the, con the countries, respective countries' requirements, we will be creating separate, separate calendars. Yes, separate calendars, yes. For creating calendars, again, you have to know how to create a calendar and different options available. Once you understand that, then you will get to the point. So, how, in any way, you can design a calendar in Dynamics. Okay. So, let's see how we can design a fiscal calendar in Dynamics. So, here you have to go to you have to open your legal entity that you are in so it's calendars is a global page actually if you open from any legal entity it will take you to the same page where calendars are available but i recommend you go for your legal entity open your legal entity here then go for general ledger in general ledger you have you have two places where you can find calendars but i'll take you to the usual page you have calendars menu and you have fiscal calendars general ledger calendars and fiscal calendars you can also see the same here fiscal calendars it's under period close but that's okay you follow this navigation it will take you to the same page both of them will lead you to the same page but write down this navigation general ledger calendars and fiscal calendars
So if I click here on fiscal calendars, see I have a lot of calendars here in my, as I would say, in this uh, organization, I have multiple calendars. So I have all of them here. I have created multiple calendars, one for each legal entity, and else few legal entities share the calendar or use the same calendar. So for our legal entity MRF, we will create our own calendar. Okay, in order to create a new calendar, you have to click here, here on new calendar. So once you navigate to general ledger, calendars and fiscal calendar, you have to click on new calendar here. So give a name to your calendar. What name you want to give? I want to give it as just MRF calendar. I can call it as MRF. Calendar just gave a description. So this one accepts few characters only. OK, let me see if it accepts also. No, see it is accepting only until calendar and it does not accept another character. It's limited. But this one description accepts more characters than this field. OK, just give a short name here and give a detail name here. Then. Here is the important part. So from which date to which date your fiscal year starts? Where your fiscal year starts and which date your fiscal year ends that you have to give here. So either it starts from 1st of January and ends with 31st December. Or if you want it to start from 1st of April and end with 31st of March or again, as I said earlier, July 1st to June 30. Everything you can decide here. So when did your calendar year should start? So what is your? idea so i want to start it from 1st of january to 31st of december if you want to change the dates like from april 1st to uh, march 31st you can do it like this click on april select april 1st go back here so april 1st 2021 to march 31st 2022 right so you can also change the year by clicking here just come down select the year march right so select march and march 31st so in this way you can give. I'll, I'll tell you more scenarios. Just understand the basic first. So this is how you can give whatever year you want on whatever date to start from and to end from, end the fiscal year from. So again, I'll, uh, I want to maintain it from uh, normally. I can maintain it in this way also, or I can start it from 1st of January to December 31st. I'll go for that pattern January 1st to December 2021. Okay, 31st December 2021. 1st of January to 31st December 2021. Okay, the name of the fiscal year it took 2021 by default. I can also give it a just like this FY 2021 fiscal year 2021. Okay, so any confusion until here? This part? Anyone? giving dates or giving names. All right. Okay. OK, OK, cool. So then. The next and important concept here. How do you want to give you periods in your calendar? Do you want to maintain a monthly calendar or a daily calendar or an yearly calendar? So what happens monthly means? I mean, sorry, as I would say, how do you want to divide periods in your calendar year? So this is a calendar year which starts from 1st of January to 31st of December as we said it as a fiscal year. So how do you want to divide periods in this fiscal year on monthly or quarterly or weekly or daily or yearly which basis you want? Honestly, if I see here, I have three options only days, months and years, but still we can use the same for dividing them on basis of quarterly and weekly also. I'll show you later how we can divide them quarterly and weekly, but here we have certain options days months and years so i'll use months okay we will also use the other ones next in the next year just for an example and here you can see length of the period so length of the period i gave as one so for each one month i want a separate period as i as i'm saying the system for each one month i want separate suppose if you want for quarter you can say three for each three months it will divide as a period so starting from january 1st to 
31st of March is a quarter, right? So for that quarter, it will divide as a period. If I say one means for each month, which means starting from 1st of January to 31st of January, one period, February 1st to February 28th, second period, March 1st to March 31st, third period, like that it will divide it into 12 periods, 12 months, 12 periods, as well as we'll have two additional periods. I'll show you what are they. So this is how this mechanism works, the length of period and the unit you have to select. So I am selecting months. We will also select the days and years and I'll show you how it works later. So for now I'm selecting months and I'm clicking on create. So before I click create, any confusion until here? Anyone? Just trying to understand more about the length of period. I mean, I mean, uh... mm, I'll show you. We'll use more examples, okay. So far enough, just understand I'm selecting months and give given one, which means I'm trying to do give the condition to the system that divide my year that I have given 12 months I have given, right? So all those months should be divided on monthly basis. Each month should be divided as a period in calendar. So I click on create here as you see. So it changed here. Yeah, may have my calendar selected MRF calendar. You can also select other calendars if you want, but we will work on this calendar, right? I'll select this calendar here. So this is the first year we have in the calendar fiscal year 2020, 2021 to I mean starting from January 1st, 2021 to December 31st, 2021. So I can see the calendar code and name description and then I can see the fiscal year name fiscal year 2021 starting date and end date. Then here I can see monthly periods. So I have an I have one operating period one closing period at the end and 12 operating periods opening operating and closing. We have three types. I'll tell you the significance of each period as well, but just understand leave about this period opening period. It is just from start of the start day is January 1st to end day is January 1st only. This is usually used to carry forward the balances from the previous years. Actually, if you have any previous balances that you have to bring into dynamics and you are starting your business from this year in dynamics. So those previous existing balances will be carried forward to this particular opening period. Usually not only in starting the business, usually when you run the year end closure process, you will close your year books right to the next year. So those carried forward balances will be brought into this opening period. So apart from this, you have operating period here, which starts from 1st of January to 31st of January, which is first month period one. So period two is from 1st of February to 28th of February. Month number two. Third one, 1st March to 31st March in the same manner. You have 12 operating periods with 12th period is from December 1st to December 31st. And you have this 13th period, which is from uh, which is only on the date of last day. So if you have any closing adjustments or any transfer of balances before you transfer it to the next year, you can make in this period. OK, so as you can see, it exactly divided the year into 12 equal parts operating period, 12 equal operating periods, and this opening and closing will be every time will it will appear regardless of whatever you units you select for division of this calendar, it will appear. So you look into this one. So it divided on basis of monthly because we gave month and one as the unit length, unit and un period length. So that's how it creates usually the year. I mean on, on the basis of monthly. So I want to add one more year to this calendar. OK, how do I add one more year? See, I have created 2021 here. If I want to add one more year, I'll click here on new year not new calendar. It will create an entirely new calendar. If you click on new calendar, please click on new year. OK. Then you can see here the new year starts from again. 1st January 2022 until 31st December 2022. And you can give it the name again as fiscal year 2022. Copy from last fiscal year. You can see an option here. If I disable this, I can see this one. 
months and one. If I say copy from last fiscal year means last fiscal year we have selected this pattern, right? Month and one. So it will select the same. If you want to change it, you can change it here. Fine. If you want to change it from months to years, usually you can change it to year. So for entire year, it will create a single operating period. Here we have 12 operating periods, right? So on the basis of each month, if I select year means it will it will create single operating period from starting from 1st of January to 31st of December. So let me click on create now. I selected period length one and year. So you can see here there is only one operating period, one closing period, one opening period, one closing period, and only one operating period, which is starting from 1st January to 31st December. Forget about the year. So that's how system works, as I was saying you. 1st January to 31st December, it will create a single period. What if we select days? Any idea what if we select days? Sidhu? Yes. So if I if I create a new year once again, and if okay. I select days other than year and select as one. OK, so I'll select this and say select length of period one and select days. So then what happens here? Any idea? So uh, it's like it will be one year like. Uh... Amshi, you, you have any idea? So we have selected months and we have seen the year is divided into 12 operating periods. When I have selected year, it is divided into single operating period for whole year. So in case if I select days and each day single one day here. So what will happen? Probably we'll get 365 operating days and yes. two opening days. We'll have two 365 operating periods and one operating, one closing. Those are common all the, all the time. OK. Let me show you how it creates. I'll just click on create here. So 2023 also created. I just forgot to give the fiscal year. I mean, add the fiscal year. No one, no one, don't mind that. See here, you have period. Sorry, period number zero in the top, which is opening period. And you see one, two, three, four. For each date, you have a operating period. First of January, you have operating. Second of January, you have operating. Third of January, you have operating. In the same manner, you have 365 operating periods. If it is a leap year, you will have 366 operating periods. OK, if I scroll down, I can see all of them for each day. I have an operating period. So this is how usually you can use these features available to design a calendar. So client might ask you for monthly calendar. Most of them will have monthly calendar only, which is which is that we have created here in the first one. 12 periods. 12 operating periods plus additionally one opening and one closing period. So totally 14 periods. If I select as year, as you have seen not already, one opening, one closing. Operating period is only for the entire year. For first starting date to end date will be the operating period. Only one period. Whereas I select days, year 365 periods are created. So it's up to the client how they want to maintain the calendar periods as within the calendar year, how they want to maintain their periods as if they want to maintain it as monthly, you can give condition like this one for this. If it, they want it yearly, you can give it like this here. Daily, you can give it like this here. All right. Any confusion in this? Vamshi or Bala, anyone? This, okay. sir, one this second, you can, the dates, mm -hmm. the dates is problem. Confusing opening to period of closing. So can we repeat oh, that? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. I go back to this one. Uh, yeah, one we'll more be, question. Yeah, we'll be so, getting one uh, one month as extra, right? From period zero to period uh, thirteen, like one one will be in ideal something like that, right? No, no, no. It's not extra. We have two additional periods: opening okay. period, okay. opening period, and closing period. So opening yes. period is only for starting date, 1st of January to 1st of January only. But that's as I said that the purpose of that is only to bring the opening balances into the system. OK, 
that means but, like uh, that means like uh, in from january to january and the uh, calculation will be done in the extra 13th month right 13th period right uh, i did not get you let yeah, me like, explain you and ask the question oh, once again okay yeah sure, sure so this period is used to bring the previous year balances or to carry forward the previous year balances into this particular date whenever i transfer balances from 2021 to 2022 you know they will be transferred to first day of 2022 only so this is the same if i am transferring balances from 2020 they will be transferred to the first day of 2020 and it is here opening balances as we call it chaitanya said and again you can record normal day-to-day -day transaction starting from this operating period so system will not uh, look into all these things so if whatever date you give there when you record the transaction it will put the transaction in that particular period but we have certain conditions that we can close certain periods if or we can if this month if we close this period january 1st there is option in ledger calendar if i close that period no user can post transactions in that in the dates including included in that period so in that manner i can design my periods how often you will close your periods how often you want to restrict your users from posting the transactions in those periods as i say i do monthly business i do monthly transactions at the end of each month i'll reconcile all of the transaction and i'll close that month or i'll keep that month on hold which means i don't allow my users again to post transactions in the past dates i want them to post on from today's days or in this particular month rather than posting again in those previous months if you want to post again in previous months you can reopen that period i'll show you that how we close and how we reopen them and coming to closing period yes if we use this closing period to transfer the balances from this fiscal year to next fiscal year so when we transfer balances will be brought into closing period later into the opening period of next year okay the significance of this opening and closing periods is that only in order to bring the balances and to transfer the balances got it situ so we can see the transactions occur within that month right yes you can you can usually see the transactions within okay. this operating period each period will have separate transactions right depending okay. on the yeah. date we select for yeah. transaction hmm. so all you have to understand here is how to design a calendar so if it is a monthly calendar i have used that option to design it in a monthly manner here okay if i have to design it yearly or my client requirement is to design it yearly for only one operating period in a year i can design it like this then if they, if they want on a daily basis calendar we can do it like this i mean it doesn't mean that if it is daily basis then we can only post transactions on daily basis if it is monthly means we can only post transactions at starting and ending of month it's not like that you can post transactions on any date it's just that the op operating periods will be divided in this manner so these are helpful to close each period so you can stop this operating period users from posting transactions in this operating period you can stop users from posting transactions in this operating period without your permission they can't post it just to control the users and control the accounting system you can use this operating periods or break down this operating periods and also in order to prepare the reports so if you prepare the reports you can prepare reports on the basis of your periods and you can maintain your depreciation of assets on the basis of your fiscal calendar periods so that's useful again so keeping that all these things in mind client will come up with a design of the calendar and if client ask for the design you can you can normally design that calendar here in this dynamics understood any confusion in this i'll show you once again okay so you see here i clicked on fiscal year 2021 and i can't see this option delete here so i want to delete this year but i can't see this option delete here if i go for 2022 also i can't see deleting the year option but if i go for 2023 i can see this option which means that it you can only delete the latest year first so if i delete this year 2023 here so you can only de delete this year because this is in draft status or no transactions are posted using this calendar 
if there are any transactions posted using this calendar you can't delete this year okay see now i deleted that year now i can see delete year option available for 2022 because this is the latest now okay i will also delete this one usually i'll delete this too but again we'll do that so for 2021 we have done it on monthly basis So I, I'll also create a new calendar, just a test calendar to show you once again, okay? To create a new calendar, you have to click here on new calendar. I'm just giving it as name as test, okay? Test one. Calendar, I'm sorry for this, okay. Then start dates and end date. So what is your start date of the calendar? What is your end date of the calendar that you have to decide? Okay, and the name of your year. So 2021, as you can you can say it as 2021. In India, I suppose general, generally, if you select it from April 1st, 2021 to March 31st, 2022, we generally used to call it as fiscal year 2021-22. So like this, we used to give the name. Fiscal year 2021-22. Then length of the period as you can select anything once. So earlier we have selected one and months, right? So it divided it into 12 periods. This time what I'll do is I'll select this period as three. Okay. This length of period as three and I'm giving units as month only. And let us see how it creates a year. Okay, I'm clicking here on create. So this is the new calendar I have created. And see here fiscal year 2021 is created and you can see here operating periods are only four operating periods one two three four because we given months and three right for every three months we have one operating period so starting from first of april to 30th of june we have an operating period first of july to 30th of september we have an operating period october to december and lastly from january 1st to 30th I mean, March 31st, we have operating period. So on quarterly basis, it have div it divided the periods. So it's just a simple trick to divide the periods on quarterly basis in calendar. All right, understood. Any confusion in this? Praveen, Siddhu. No, no. Um, Sairam, Vamshi. No, Bala. And now I have a question for you. Okay, I want to create one more year. How how can I create one more year now in this calendar next year? Click on new year. New year. New year. Okay, click on new year. It selected days. Okay. I want to create a weekly calendar this time. How can I do that? Anyone? First of all, I'll click here. Copy from last fiscal year will be disabled because I don't want the same format. If I click on copy from fiscal years, generally, I'll get the same format. What I have in 2020, 21, 22, I'll get the same here in this new year also, the same quarterly pattern. It just copies the same pattern to next year. But normally, I'll create one more year as you see here. I don't want the same pattern. I want it weekly. Any idea how we can do it weekly? So for quarterly, we we have seen three and months. So three months. And update length of period as seven and uh, unit as days. Exactly. Length of period is seven, and I'm taking units as days, which means for each seven days there will be a period, which means weekly period. Got it? Is everyone clear about this one? So if I select days here. And if I select length as seven for every seven days, it will create an operating period. For every week, it will create one operating period. It works like that. So now I'll click here on create. So you can see op opening period is usually the same, but top period one, you can see operating period from 1st of April to 7th of April, 8th of April to 14th. 15 to 21 every seven days you have a period the same way you will have how many weeks you have in a year 
53 weeks 53 periods it's actually uh, 52 weeks only we have one extra day here two extra days actually that two extra days are adjusted into the last period of 53 usually every period will have seven days but if if we do like that you will you will be remained with two days so that two days is adjusted into this period 53 that's all so this is how simply we can create a weekly calendar or divide periods on the basis of weekly there are also some manual ways how you can divide your periods that here you see this option as divide period so we will discuss these options tomorrow division of period creation of additional closing periods deleting a period how to delete it we'll discuss that tomorrow